Hellmaster EX. This award-winning system features the first single-engine joystick with digital electric steering and new autopilot capability. See Hellmaster EX in action at a Yamaha Outboard dealer or visit YamahaOutboards.com. Hey, tune into this week's weekly video fishing forecast for a look at our late senior editors memorial at Captree Overlook Pier. We also have some fake bluefin tuna news. You want to check out this one. We have an open boat special with a legendary surfcaster and reports from around the island. The fishing news is sponsored by these fine partners. For you. Yes, have you heard of that bluefin tuna fake news report that came from Raritan Bay over in Jersey? All the details coming up from Jim Hutch from Jersey. Fake news. President Trump made it part of the national lexicon, and ever since it's been used by both the left and the right to defame and demoralize any comments that somebody, someone doesn't like, any comment that's made. It's, uh, it's basically the nuclear option for a cancel culture. So if a journalist prints a quote from a person who later recants, that person can just call it fake news and he or she no longer owns their questionable statement, fact or fiction, doesn't matter. You call it fake news and everybody's gonna come defend you against us wicked members of the news media. So. Last Wednesday, an angler who's also a licensed charter boat captain in, uh, on the Raritan Bay at the Jersey Shore had a little fun on his birthday, uh, throwing an old replica tuna mount, apparently, on his 12-foot aluminum John boat, motoring out to the tip of Sandy Hook with his trusty 89 Johnson outboard and had someone take pictures of him, showing the Hemingway-esque scene as if he battled a monster bluefin solo, a Nantucket sleigh ride, at Flynn's Knoll. Now, the reason you didn't see this in our video fishing forecast last week is because quite honestly, I thought it was a joke, and it was. But as this post continued to get legs, I had to call a couple of reliable sources just to make sure I wasn't missing the tin boat. Funny, ha-ha, joke, no worries, you're all good. But then the story went like coronavirus viral. Hundreds, if not thousands, of shares on Facebook and Instagram. And by Thursday morning, the Asbury Park Press had already reached out to the angler the night prior. As any respectable journalist would do, that writer, a friend of mine, contacted the fisherman to corroborate his fish story. It's clear that must have happened, because if you were to go back and look at the Thursday Press article, uh, it is a little bit different. There were some quotes there that did not appear in the original Facebook post. I spoke with this respected journalist, a friend of mine, his name's Dan. He confirmed that he spoke to the angler that Wednesday night a couple of different times. Had the angler apparently sign a waiver granting permission to use the photo, spoke to the photographer who will call a corroborating witness of sorts. Now, even then, Thursday, personally, I was still a little skeptical. So when we shared the Instagram message of the angler story on Thursday night after the press article went live, we also posted a couple of questions. Birthday bluefin from the bay was one. And real or fake news, you decide, with one of those dopey little smiley face icons. Now, given the fact that the Asbury Park Press article had components about the catch that didn't appear in the original social media post, I began to question this uh, again as a member of the fake media that I am. So I called another couple of sources just to confirm, corroborated. Yes, it's still a joke. Folks liked how we posted the Instagram post, though. Real or fake news, you decide. That was the best thing to do. Because how can I call something false when you got a guy saying, no, seriously, it happened in the news media? Now. At this point on Friday, national media had picked up on this Santiago-like tale of man versus fish, young man in the sea, if you will. And a few of us fishing writers, including my friend at the press, tried in vain to reach this young man again who was at the center of this tall tale. Again, according to the Asbury Park Press, he'd already confirmed the original report. But now there's a write-up in the Asbury Park Press this week. It's out on Tuesday, July 30th, that said even though the guy was interviewed twice by the press for the original story, headline-wise, 
we've now crossed the line, gone from joke to hoax. Now, for starters, I've never seen an HMS permit on a tin duck boat. I'm not sure how a 135-pound bluefin could actually be dragged over the gunnel of such a boat without that fish looking pretty beat up, much less how it could be caught on that boat without capsizing the tin boat. The fish itself looked pristine. There was very little blood on the cockpit floor. But still, the angler told the press reporter, apparently, no, it's true, and there's photo photographic proof. Talk to the photographer, which the reporter did. So anyway, young Santiago never called any of us back, but posted a mea culpa Friday night on Facebook and Instagram calling this whole Donnybrook fake news. Hypothetical question for you. If you tell a reporter a lie and the reporter prints that lie, who owns it? You were the reporter. And when does a joke become a hoax? And when does that hoax then become a lie? People love to scream fake news, but it would appear in this case that the news media vetted the story with the source and perhaps a corroborating witness with photographic support, so I'm told. So when the angler apparently got caught up in this viral web, he did a Friday night social media dump. But in my opinion, he just put the blame back on the media for believing his version of the events events that apparently never actually happened. So think of it from my perspective. Artificial intelligence, or the lack thereof. The growing lack of respect for reporters and news media, and this mistaken belief that you can say whatever you want, spin all the yarns you wish, and make any claim in the world, no matter how unbelievable, you never have to own your fable because you can always blame the fake news. And I hear a lot of folks now getting their news from social media, Instagram, Facebook, uh, Instagram. So why would you even need someone like me or a dedicated journalist at the Asbury Park Press? Because of this debacle, it appears the Asbury Park Press will be implementing new hoops and hurdles in terms of background checks when reporting on some catches. I, I don't know, should I be checking everybody's permits and registrations and licenses? Get your permit number before I share your fishing report? I guess for now on, every photo that I run in the Fisherman Magazine has to, uh, needs a disclaimer. Every fishing report will include a liability waiver, and each how-to article will feature a checkbox that you have to mark so that you don't hold us responsible uh, for not being able to catch fish after you read the article. How many local newspapers are still carrying uh, uh, fishing news when compared to 20 years ago? And what happens when a newspaper publisher decides that tall tales from fishermen may put their journalistic integrity at further risk? You see where this is going, right? Who gets the last laugh now when there are no reporters reporting on fish stuff? It's like the little boy who cried wolf fish as the final nail gets hammered into the fishing news media's coffin. You wouldn't fib to your priest. You wouldn't lie in a quarter law in front of a judge, but tell half-truths or lies to a news reporter, that's okay, I guess. Well, no, it's not. And once you pull the media into your little web of online hucksterism, a line gets crossed between a hoax and a lie, and it's no longer protected speech. It's shouting fire in a crowded theater, causing a panic. And if some Yahoo now thinks that he can go chase bluefin in a 12-foot John boat off the Jersey coast and doesn't, re doesn't return home, you own that, too. I can name a half dozen environmental zealots getting paid by major non-government, non-profit and environmental organizations that would love to see the fishing press, especially me, get canceled. I saw at least one of those clowns reveling in the fact that the Asbury Park press was deceived. Big joke, huh? That meathead and his activist buddies will be doing victory laps when there's no one left to cover fisheries news, no reporters going to fisheries meetings, breaking down regulations, and exposing government neglect on our community, or editorializing on behalf of fish, recreational fishermen, and our recreational fishing community. When the last fishing reporter gets canceled, the clowns win and the anglers lose. Think about that, my merry little pranksters. Oh, and don't forget, you have to report your bluefin catches. Get your HMS permit for your center console, your sport fish, your express, your kayak, your duck boat, 
you're chasing tuna this season, you need the HMS permit, and you have to report your catches back to the government, honestly and accurately. There's no fooling the feds, my friends. They have a different way of dealing with fake news. Now is the best time to buy a boat at the Jersey Shore Boat Sale and Expo. Fishing boats for inland and offshore. Tons of center consoles. September 27th through 29th, Shore Town Ballpark. Home of the Jersey Shore Blue Claws. Tickets at JerseyBoatExpo.com. Life is better with a boat. Last week, there was a dedication at Captree Overlook Pier to the late fisherman senior editor and my mentor, Fred Galifaro. A plaque was placed at the Captree Overlook Pier. This is a spot that Fred would fish very often. He'd frequent it often. The plaque was created in unison with state parks and the fishing advisory board and highlights some of the wonderful things that he did for the community. Chip Gorman from state parks, Mike Cruz from the fishermen, and Fred's wife, Don Galfaro, along with myself, we all said some brief words at the unveiling. The ceremony was attended by many of those who are close to Fred. I encourage all those passing by the area to give the spot a visit. The August glossy issue of the Fisherman Magazine, it just came out. We got a lot of stuff in store for you. Captain John Raguso, he's got an informative read with tips for rigging your own jigs. Jeff Sorelli, he has an informative article on spoon fed fluke fishing. Get on the fast track to catching a doormat. I have what you need to know about selecting the right surf rod this fall run. Tough tuna, learn how to decode a finicky bite with Captain Connor. Then understanding the marine biology of predator and prey can pay off big and dock them. Adam Aguiar shares his knowledge on the subject. To get the glossy edition and all three digital editions, this past weekend's reports and more, be a subscriber to the Fisherman Magazine. And don't forget about our subscriber-only Dreamboat Challenge and Coastal Kayak Clash. Subscribe today. Hey to Fisherman's Jenny Ackerman. She's another open boat special with legendary surfcaster Shelly Karras. Hey everyone, good morning or good afternoon if you're watching the video fishing forecast today. We're on the beach and you see behind me we have surf casting legend Shelly Karras and he's been fluking off the beach and being very successful but he's fluking a little bit differently. He's using jerk baits. So today he's going to show us how it's done catching fluke on the jerk bait. Come on flukey. I started fishing for fluke probably when I was seven years old. My dad took me to the Shark River um, and we would use spearing for bait and fish the outgoing tides in the, in the uh, Shark River Inlet and catch you know fluke uh, all summer long. We were residents of Union and we had a summer home in Belmar so that was where I was introduced to fishing and I became hooked for life. What you want to do is uh, do a couple twitches and then catch up to the slack. And they hit it on that pause, generally. This is my secret spot. Nobody knows about this location. It's got a lot of depth to the water and uh, the fluke are in here almost all the time. It's my secret spot, so don't tell anyone where it is. And all of that darker water in here, that's where it drops off. So they could be laying in there waiting for something to slide over that sandbar. There's plenty of water here. Oh, I'm on. I'm off. And that's what the fluke are feeding on, a lot of them. When there's a lack of bait fish, they're in there feeding on these mole crabs. I'm looking for that scallop part of the shoreline, and usually that scallop area is where the deeper water is going to be. It gets cut out. And I'm looking for that little pool of water because the tide's pretty low at the moment. It's like perfect right here.
Come on. I got it. There you go. <laughs> it's a bluefish. Uh <laughs> Ah, that's not what we're here for. <laughs> what I'm doing, it's a, generally two twitches and then a pause and then catch up to your slack. And even that bluefish hit on the slack. I mean, I should say when I paused and took up the slack. That bait will suspend and get to the bottom and then on the pause it starts to rise and that's when I'll attack it. About a week ago, I caught one 3.9 ounces, or 3.9 pounds, almost four pounds on a um, evergreen force. It looked just like a spot. And uh, when I kept the fish and I cleaned it, and it had a spot in it, and it was hooked. There was a hook in the, the spot. And when I, first I thought it was a piece of wire, and I'm, I'm like looking at it, I'm going, what is that? And I pull it out, it was an English style fluke hook. And uh, it got off, it, the eye was open, and uh, I got pictures of it that you could show, and uh, it's pretty cool. That, and the bait was so much bigger than the, the lure in size, so a fluke could take a really large size lure. Um, and that was uh, my biggest one so far. And you know, that day I had three other fish and one other keeper. But the fish almost four pounds on a jerk bait, it's pretty cool. Basically what you want to have is a, like a seven foot rod, medium action to light action, it's kind of a softer tip to give it that good jerking motion and then that pausing. Uh, sort of like a 3000 size reel. This is a soft X, which is a, a perfect size reel for this type of fishing. Um, the VR 50s are perfect. Uh, anything that's in that category is gonna work. You want to spool your um, setups with like 20 pound braid or 15 pound braid and I'm down to a 12 pound fluorocarbon leader and the snaps I like to use are the BKK snaps small but super super strong when you get these lures they're freshwater style lures and they're freshwater hooks so it's important to change the hooks upgrade them to saltwater uh, heavy duty but thin wire and what I'm using are the BKK hooks and I'm using the salt X in size four, six, and eights. And they will work on all of these different crankbaits. And some of these will imitate, you know, spearing, sand eels. Uh, this imitates a spot, a little peanut bunker. Um, these are all gonna work for summer flounder or fluke. And uh, they work in shallow to water up to seven feet along our coast. And um, it's a fun way of fishing. Yeah, it's you know? definitely, it's a good option. I mean, exactly. when gold bits and working, because there's so much bait in the summertime. I mean, you have sand fleas, you, like you said, spot, tons Correct. of different baits. So sometimes, you know, you got to match the hatch. Exactly. So you're, and, you're finding new ways of well, catching fluke and having fun doing it. It's, and I, I tell everybody, I'm not giving up fishing with gulp. Uh, you know, I'll fan my cast with gulps if there's a bunch of fluke around and I'll switch to the uh, crankbaits. And when they hit it, they rip the rod out of your hand almost. It's an amazing hit and I've caught them up to almost four pounds uh, this season. And this season in general hasn't been the best fluke season, you know, but we're hoping that it's still got two months left and the water finally got into the 70 degree mark today. And uh, we're gonna get some uh, good fluke action in the next uh, two months I'm hoping for. Definitely. And this is another option. It's yeah, a lot of fun. Definitely, I mean, pick it up. I'm gonna get some of these lures and, and do this next time I go out fluking because just watching you fish, it was fun. So. All right. <laughs> Go okay. plug in for some flukes. Okay. Tim C. Smith, he has an update on the Dreamboat and the Coastal Kayak Clash. And now the Dreamboat Fishing Challenge entries for the week. The Sea Robin category had two entries this week, shifting the standings. We have a New Jersey subscriber, John Payer of Lanoka Harbor, New Jersey, weighing in a Sea Robin at 2.39 pounds, putting him into fifth place. Then there's Long Island subscriber Paul Alberano from Medford, New York, entering his second fish in the contest, a Sea Robin weighing in at 2.38 pounds, putting him in sixth place. In the fluke category, 
We also had two entries. Long Island subscriber Thomas Luciano of West Sayville with his fluke coming in at 11.22 pounds, placing him in seventh. And then we have Walter Rowland, another Long Island subscriber of Huntington Station with his fluke weighing in at 7.3 pounds. The leaderboard stands like this. Scott Waterman still holding in at 17 points and a tie at 13 points between Brian Zambreski and Anthony Savino. Just a reminder for your chance to win the grand prize Steigercraft Power by Yamaha and other great prizes, you need to be a subscriber to the magazine and use a 2024 entry form filled out completely available at thefisherman.com slash contests. We had only one new entry this week in the Coastal Kayak Clash. Todd Triazone of New England landed this 47 inch striper, but the standings remain the same. Bob Wagner and Justin Oser are still stuck in a tie at nine points apiece. Mike Radzuzuski is in third place, still within striking distance with six points. For all the details and how to enter, visit thefisherman.com slash contests. Hey, two of our boat dealers just got some new boats in on a trade-in. Here's Tim C. Smith with all the details. This 2019 24-foot Boston Whaler Dauntless powered by a 300-horsepower Merc just arrived at Suffolk Marine Center in Babylon. No price yet, but this is a desirable boat that won't last long. Contact Andrew Dean for all the details. Kale's Family Boating Center in Lindeners has this practically new 2024 20-foot Sea Pro powered by a 150-horsepower Suzuki with only 20 hours, asking 59.9. Contact Mike or Tom. August 24th and 25th on Long Island Sound. WICC Surfside Hotel Greatest Bluefish Tournament on Earth. $25,000 for the heaviest catch, plus additional prizes equaling $40,000. Sign up now at bluefishtournament.com. All right, let's check in with the upcoming events. First off, we have the Blowfish Bonanza this Saturday, August 3rd at Jones Beach Field 10. That's from 10 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. and it's sponsored by the Montauk Surfcasters Association. August 8th is a Town of Iceland Public Freshwater Clinic. August 10th is the fifth annual Freeport Tuna Club Fluke Shootout Tournament. Then on the 17th is the eighth annual Summer Fluke Slam on the 22nd. That's a free snap jig seminar at Montauk Anglers Club with Captain John Paduano, and I'm gonna be there myself. August 24th and 25th is that greatest bluefish tournament on earth. Then also on the 24th and the 25th is the Long Island Maritime Museum Seafood Festival. To get all the details and more information, visit thefisherman.com slash events. All right, let's head over to the map. I'll tell you what I've personally been hearing this past week. Ryan and Brady, they sent me this picture of them catching some black sea bass that was on the ebb tide in Montauk this past Saturday. Then Lily, she shows off some great South Bay blowfish and kingfish. It's that time of year to get down to your local docks, maybe the bridges in the great South Bay. Both these species are in. Jacob and his girlfriend, they show off a nice cobia caught west of Fire Island Inlet. And Tony Pagnota, he fished south of Tobey on the 28th last month for this cobia that weighed 40 pounds. It was Tony's first ever, ever cobia. Great cobia bike going on. Get on it now before they're not here anymore. If you have a notable catch, email me at mbroderick at thefisherman.com. I'll try and get into the weekly video fishing forecast for the magazine. For nearly 90 years, the Viking fleet from Montauk has been putting anglers on the fish. Whether you jump on a half-day trip, fish the deep for an overnight adventure targeting big game, a day trip to block, or a sunset cruise. Their experienced captains and crew have you covered. Vikingfleet.com. Meteorologist Rich Von Owen, his fishing report and weather is brought to you by Premium Bucktails. Rich. Hey, thanks, Matt. We'll check that weekend forecast. You can always check your favorite apps, weather tools, weather sites, whatever you got. This is a general heads up, general overview on the upcoming weekend. First weekend of August on the way and a little fishing report from last weekend. We had a beautiful ocean and we were going for cobia. 
some of the bunker schools way offshore, and we ran into some of these uh, kind of beautiful black tip and spinner sharks, confirmed the species with a local marine biologist here on Long Island. So they were out in full force on the bunker schools. Yeah, we're trying to get the cobia, but uh, these sharks took over and stole the show. They were, uh, you know, just leaping out of the water, coming up, uh, you know, three, four, five feet, just doing some aerials and uh, really fighting us pretty hard. But uh, pretty cool-looking sharks there, pelagics, the black tips and the uh, spinners coming into our waters right now with the rising water temps. And, you know, they're probably still out there. I'm sure they've spread out quite a bit uh, south of Long Beach, Jones Beach, perhaps getting into Fire Island. This is the southwest corner in the ocean in Nassau County. And again, we'll see if they continue their eastward trek, perhaps going out towards uh, Fire Island. But uh, water temps coming up. We have a lot of 70s with the south breeze this week. And it looks like it's going to continue for Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Not an optimum weekend to do the fishing. Friday looks okay, though. The winds are still light. Maybe a couple of showers in there. And then by Saturday and Sunday, the south-southwest, similar to what we had during the early part of the week, begins to kind of, you know, rile things up in the ocean. You know, the Great South Bay should be okay, Peconic Bay good, the sound should be fine if you got some fishing plans there, but the ocean's going to be a little bit sloppy going into uh, Sunday. So maybe not the best weekend to go to the canyon way offshore. Maybe Friday and Saturday, if you can pull that off, that would be okay, but then watch out. It starts to kick up again for Sunday. Uh, certainly those three to fives, four to eights start to creep into the island on the south shore. 70s, 80s temperatures, both Saturday, Sunday. It's not hot, but what you don't see there it's quite humid. Uh, the Wind Guru, one of my go-to apps, says, uh, you know, good for the wind for Friday. A little cloudy, some showers, though. Saturday, you know, a little south wind starts to kick in, a little more there. You know, clouds, not too bad. And then Sunday, you see those waves and meters start to go 1.4, 1.5. You multiply by 3, and that gives you that, uh, you know, 3 to 5, 4 to 6 deal. So we'll go green check in the ocean for Friday. All areas should be good. Day to fish. A couple of showers, though, bring the rain gear. Saturday, it's so-so, you know, a little more of a southwest-southeast breeze with some fog. And then Sunday, probably going to be a little rough in the ocean, you know, 3 to 6. Maybe the sound's okay. Maybe the bays are okay. The surf should be riled up. So just be careful. You're going to be out and about doing some fishing. Speaking of which, I'm going to be taking a break. I'm heading up on a uh, trip of a lifetime up in the Anchorage, Alaska area for about a week doing some fly fishing, remote adventures. It's going to be uh, quite a blast, something I've been looking forward to for a long time. So I'll see you when I get back in a couple of weeks. In the meantime, have a great weekend. Enjoy. Catch them up. Be safe as always. Matt, back to you. From Shinnecock, Mike Dean. Thanks, Matt. Hey, everyone. Summer doldrum fishing kind of still going on in between Shinnecock and Mauritius. The wind the last few days and the swell has made it a little bit tough for people to get out front. But when you are able to get out, out front in the ocean, the fluke bite has been pretty good. The sea bass bite has been fairly good. 16 and a half is kind of tough to, you know, to uh to get but there's been a lot of action hampton reef and another other pieces of structure a lot of um a lot of ling there porgies even the occasional cod so that's kind of refreshing to hear back in the bay there's been some fluke but not a whole lot um the snappers have kind of gotten big enough to to actually catch on all the snapper zappers so those those make out for some great fluke baits to take out front when the weather allows for it there's two person per day limit on those uh on those snappers since they are just baby bluefish um the, f the fluke limit goes up to 19 and a half today and continues that through the end of the season and um so that is what it is be aware of that when the weather windows have been there the tuna bite's been pretty good all the way out with big eyes alice and yellowfin um closer in there's been pretty good yellowfin bite a lot of smaller smaller bluefin some mahi showing up um, so that's encouraging and uh, it's not always all the way out there have like I said been some fish a little bit closer in um, Cobia I've seen the videos of them, but I have not heard of a catch in between Shinnecock and Mauritius I'd love to be one of the first ones to make that report if you have that report to make let us know uh, I know it's going pretty good with those to the west my buddy Matt Hannock hit into a 51 pounder over the weekend out of Jones Inlet way to go Matt and um so that's really about it. Enjoy the weekend. Hopefully this weather will cooperate and get some fishing in, and I'll talk to you next week. Back to you, Matt. From Sag Harbor, Will and Andy. Thanks, Matt. So reported this week out of Sag Harbor. Uh, the weak fish bite has continued pretty strong, actually, which has been uh, great. The fluking has been getting slightly better um, a little bit further out east. Um, it was slow for much of the summer, but um, it is picking up a little bit, guys. So it's pretty exciting. Um, stripers as well, further out to the east, have been pretty solid, both on top and also um, on the bottom, jigs, live bait, etc. Um, and also the black sea bass has been great too, clams, squid, gulp, you name it. Um, really, they've been hitting it pretty hard, along with the porgies too, which has been great for us and for our coolers, of course. 
And um, yeah, we're hoping this continues, guys, um, and it stays strong. And I uh, hope you're having a great summer. Back to you, Matt. Let's check in with Hawaiian Dan. Aloha, friends, and thank you, Matt. I'm Hawaiian Dan of TalkFishTV.com, reporting on the central north shore, near shore region of Long Island, where I'm always dipping around with my Sea Eagle inflatable Fast Cat 14 catamaran skip from SeaEagle.com. And boy, things keep changing from one week to the next, so be sure to subscribe to TalkFishTV.com and the Fisherman Magazine so you don't miss out on a single report. The bays, harbor, and sound are still flooded with one to three inch rain bait, which make porgy, sea bass, fluke, weak fish, and schoolie striper fishing fun. This week we have the addition of peanut bunker and snappers, AKA small bluefish, and of course larger bunker are still in the mix. At this stage in the season, the weather can change quickly and that can greatly impact the bite. So here's a tip I'm sharing through constantfishingcontact at gmail.com where you can sign up for real time information, but I'll share it here with the Fisherman Magazine as well. The inshore and nearshore regions are greatly affected by rain. The runoff disrupts the temperature, thermocline, oxygen, nutrients, and pH of the water, just to name a few. It takes about three days after the last rain for things to settle back into the norm. So if you struck out recently, it may not necessarily be you. Give it a few days and try again, and I'm sure you'll have better results. Feeling the need to get out, I recently went out the day after a storm and struck out. Three days later, I went out again and landed three slots in the 28 to 31 inch class in less than 30 minutes. If you like this information and want more just like it, reach out to me at constantfishingcontact at gmail.com. Now get off those couches, grab some friends, and get out there and fish. Remember, make someone smile today and every day. And until next week, stay safe out there and keep spreading that aloha. Now back to you, Matt. From Northport, the Cal Harbor Bait and Tackle Report. Hey, folks, it's great to be back with you again this week. Back in the USA, I was over in Portugal with family, just hanging out, summer vacation. It's so much fun. Beautiful, friendly people in beautiful country. Fish, farms, lots to do. It's just great. But I'm back in the USA, and I got my new red, white, and blue USA flag hats here at Cal Harbor. They're just a great way to show your patriotism, especially these days. Fishing is going really great. It's just so much to do here on the North Shore of Long Island. It's exciting. I mean, porgies are all over the place. Phil makes the most awesome porgy jigs that call out like those jumbo ones. Come into the shop, check them out and buy some. Uh, buy a hat. Um, there's a lot going on. Striped bass. Striped bass is still active. Can you believe it? It's July and we've got bass. Bass are hanging deep. You can jig them. You can uh, do some fancy bucktailing and uh, use chunks. There's a lot of different methods that are working right now. Bluefish, for the most part, you're going to see out in the middle of the sound that they're coming in up on some spots like, you know, 28C, uh, 11B. You'll see them over by Crane's Neck, and uh, they'll come up, and it's great for top water and everything like that. Or if you want to drag some uh, umbrella rigs and just uh, get some action, that works as well. Uh, as I mentioned, porgies are all over the place. This sea bass are not really accompanying them so much in the shallower areas. I've seen sea bass, uh, the where it is, more on the Connecticut side. And that's going to be like Bud's Reef, the ledge, go try Norwalk Islands in there. And uh, there's a lot of structure. And the larger sea bass have a tendency to sit there. Just watch the rocks. Definitely check your charts if you're over there and you're unfamiliar with Connecticut. Um, as far as other fish, fluke. Fluke are gone deep. You know, I would be in the, if you're in our area, in Huntington area, work in the fingers. If you're in Cold Spring Harbor by 15 Crane's Neck, you've got all those boulders and rocks, you know. The fish are chasing the smaller porgies right now. So you're going to get the opportunity to catch some Goliath fluke and uh, make sure you have your net ready. And uh, remember, we have got live killies here at our shop. Uh, live killies are just a trophy bait. It's a beautiful, hardy uh, live bait that you can take out and use uh, live. And it's amazing. Three or four foot with a bare hook and you'd be surprised just the size of the fish that you can catch out there. There's just so many opportunities. I get, I hope you're going out and uh, exploring them with friends and creating memories. Again, fishing is a wonderful thing and we need wonderful things these days, don't we? Until next week, I bid you all peace and tight line. From the Fire Island area in Great South Bay, Captain Al Lorenzetti. Hey Matt, Fire Island report. Uh, typical summer activity, a lot of fluke, a lot of shorts though, but an occasional really big fish in between. I heard of a 14 pound fish caught around Fire Island. Uh, and then I know a couple on the eight, nine pound range, but you really gotta work hard for them. And uh, like I said, far and few between. Bottom fishing, excellent. Right now on, you know, Kismet Reef, any of the bridge abutments, whatever. Uh, kingfish, triggerfish, uh, sea bass, uh, you name it. It's really put a chum pot down, 
little bit of chum on a hook and you're going to catch some fish and have a good time. Bluefish is showing up too. Up on the surface, some cocktail blues, two to four pounds, and then a few big ones too by the inlet area on live bait. So looks like a decent weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, a little blowy, but uh, get out there and the fishing is good. Catch them up, have a good time. All right, let's get the way to some all pro tackle and markets. Hey, Matt, this week's fishery port is not so bad. Things are getting better, but you're gonna have to get to the outside. The McAllister, the AB Reef, even the Hempstead Reef, action is starting to pick up. I haven't been able to get out to the cholera, but the word is that that's starting to warm up as well. Sea bass, fluke, uh, it's all about, you know, the, the technique that you're gonna be using and the baits that you're using. Also hearing, obviously it's all over the internet now, the cobia bite. A lot of people, you know, haven't fished for cobia before. We're holding a seminar this Thursday, August 1st, gonna speak about cobia and the cobia bite. Um, so people may wanna come down to uh, see that. Um, sorry, I gotta bring this. We can pick it up. We can pick it up. Okay, um, one. Where do you wanna pick it up? I'm gonna pick it up, I'm gonna go to the tuna now. Okay, so I'm gonna just back up, I'm gonna change okay. the shot. We'll count it down loud. Right. Right here, you say three, two, one. Three two, one. And yes, finally, we got a tuna bite. The tuna are moving in now. You're going to find them around the Carimbra. There's a bite around the Bacardi. Um, again, it's a little inconsistent, but you got to get out there. Yes, if you can get out to the canyon, the bite is there. If you can't, I understand, bring it back in, work the areas. Back to you, Matt. With the fly, freshwater port, and maybe some salt water, Paul McCain from River Bay Outfitters. Hello, Matt. Well, this has been a really nice week. The weather has really ch uh, chilled down a little bit. Uh, we did get a little rain, which is also very good. I'm at, but I've been very busy guiding. I, I've been guiding here twice this week. Uh, I had uh, Matthew, he was out uh, with me on Sunday and brand new, never touched the fly rod. He had a brand new fly rod, never even touched it. Right, we took him out there. Uh, we were very successful. We worked on his casting. He got it down pretty good. He had a good time. Most of the time, the problem with beginners is usually it's not, eh, they'll learn the casting, but what do you do after you cast? And they st still, they're grabbing the lines. They're going like this. They got to they gotta learn. It becomes one motion. Cast it, put it under your finger, strip it in the line. That's all it is took. But he did, but he caught a lot of fish. Now, today, I was out with Chuck. Chuck fishes once a year. He comes in from California and I take him out and he had another great day, uh, but he learned a lot and he's get, he's improving, but he only fishes once a year. It makes it very tough. As far as the salt water goes, well, salt water is like bluefish. Bluefish are all over the back base. They're all small. They're all the bay blues, two to three pounds. Great fun on a fly rod. Uh, the fluke fishing, especially for me, and I'm fish from shore, I've been doing pretty good uh, as far as, but they're all shorts. I don't care. I don't care if it's a sea robin. Uh, we had a great time. I've been doing pretty good with that. So the best thing to do is get out there, and if, if you want to learn how to fly fish, reach out to me. I do a, a group, I have a package deal that works for everybody. Um, so until next week. Tie lines, everybody. From Huntington, Captain Gage. Harbor, where I fish seven days a week for sandcitycharter.com. Check out the website. So this week, the bunker have really shown up. We're seeing a football field size pot of bunker everywhere we go. They're even back here in the harbor. So um, the peanut bunker back here have gotten pretty big. They get nice size, great for fluke fishing and for bottom fishing. We love taking live bait out with us, guys, whether it be the peanuts, whether it be the adult bunker, but we're going out there on every trip with live bunker, and me and my mate love changing up our tactics this time of the year. It's a great time to get out there and switch things up a little bit. So we get out there, we've been catching some nice size bass. There's some slots, there's some overs, there's some unders, so you're catching a little bit of everything. Uh, we've been getting a lot of cocktail blues. We've had a couple of blues that were decent size, but nothing really in the 15 16 pound gator monster blues with shoulders the yellow eyed demons we haven't gotten any giant blues but we are getting a lot of the cocktail blues uh mixed in there's a lot of bird action out there 
As you can hear, a thunderstorm in the background. You probably see it behind me. So uh, there's a summertime thunderstorm rolling through. So make sure when you head out, you know what the weather's doing. And uh, I mean, I'm down here working either way. As a commercial tow captain, I'm here five days a week. So we're out there fishing too every morning. So tomorrow we'll be getting out for the bottom fishing, uh, taking a family of four out. So we'll be out fishing for the fluke and the porgy. Uh, still haven't seen much on the sea bass front. But as far as fishing is concerned, fishing is great, guys. If you want to get out, let us know. I'll be happy to get you out there. And again, if you want to join us on the night bite and get out and sit on the oh. chunk, we're always happy to do that. We love live lining and chunking at nighttime. Great time. So wishing everybody bent rods, tight lines, and I'll see you out on the water. Back to you, Matt. Let's check on in with Chris Landry. Thanks, Matt. Well, Cobia fishing remains strong, stronger than the last couple of years. We went out a few days ago. Carl Newman got a 42-inch Cobia. We will be doing Cobia and bluefin tuna trips. Uh, there are bluefin busting inshore. Uh, very difficult to land. These are giants. Uh, there's yellowfin tuna offshore, but the next week looks pretty sporty, too sporty to go out. Uh, but we will be doing yellowfin trips as weather permits and mahi are starting to come in. We checked a bunch of pots and we only found a few mahi, but I am hearing reports of mahi showing up. The offshore uh, water temperatures were around 72, 73, but they are warming up and as they get 75 and warmer, I think we'll see more mahi coming in, hopefully some albies coming in, some of these southern species coming into our waters, which is always exciting to catch something new. So if you want to catch some kobe and go for bluefin tuna, Hit us up at Rocksteady. We'll be doing regular trips for that and uh, yellowfin tuna trips as weather permits. All right, stay safe out there. Stay tight. Thank you. And back to you, Matt. From the Western Sound, we have Nuno de Costa from Tile Lord Tackle up in Rye. Fishing report. Western Sound, a little quiet, quieter than we like it to be. There's a lot of bait stacking up, a lot of bunker, a lot of peanut bunker. There are some striped bass around, not much bluefish, which is very odd for this time of year but you never know what's gonna happen as the bait moves in. There are some porgies around, the occasional fluke. As you go further east, you'll get into some sea bass in Connecticut and some better bottom fishing out there. The hot lick is offshore. The tuna fishing is the thing right now. Uh, good bite off of Montauk, the bluefin, all different size class there from mediums to giants to schoolies. There's a bite off of Jersey and sporadic canyon bites here and there in different canyons for your yellow fin, some swordfish, some wahoo, some marlin out there. So I believe that's their best bet is the offshore fishing right now, as long as the weather cooperates. Guys signing out, have a great week, get out there. <laughs> it's a snug. Rob Greco of the Long Island Outdoors Bay in Rockville Center checks in. Hello, Fisherman readers. This is Robert from Long Island Outdoorsman giving you this week's fishing report. Uh, as of right now, the word on the street is cobia. Uh, it's been about two weeks now. They've been running pretty good. If you can find bunker anywhere between like 40 to 70 feet of water is what I've been hearing. Uh, outside of uh, East Rockaway Inlet, they pretty much head straight south. Um, areas around Atlantic Beach Reef. Um, out to the Pink Hotel, uh, Roundhouse, you know, those, those areas have been holding some bunker. And if you got to weed through the sharks a little bit, but if you can weed through the sharks, eventually you're going to connect with a nice cobia. Uh, Dawn Cozine, um, the wife of Mark Cozine, who works for us, they were out and got a nice cobia. Steve Howell, he had a nice one as well. Um, and then as far as the tuna report, it's been great. Uh, as long as the weather has been good, guys have been able to get out. Um, John McMurray of One More Cast Charters has been pretty much going every day. Um, and as you can see here in the photos, getting some really nice big fish all on plugs. Uh, Ron Z, uh, soft plastics, um, Mad Mantis poppers, you know, all that kind of, uh, and jigs, you know, metal jigs. Um, we have all that stuff in stock here. If you're looking for like Nomad jigs, um, we have all that stuff to help you out. Uh, popping rods, jigging rods, all that stuff. So um, thank you, and back to you guys. Fisherman Magazine has an apparel store. We have hats, sweatshirts, hoodies, T-shirts, all online now. And free shipping with orders over $100. It is the perfect gift for yourself. Visit thefisherman.com shop or click on the card in the upper right.
Hey, remember to like our video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and tap on the bell to be notified instantly when we do post a new video on YouTube. Please support our correspondents by visiting their websites and their social media pages. Do not forget this video is available as a podcast on iTunes and Google Music. Search for the Fisherman Magazine podcast and subscribe so you can listen to this broadcast along with our other content. One thing is for certain, these Kobe have made a showing and they're biting pretty well right now. Take advantage of the bite before it ends. The food fishing's been great. Some good tuna fishing starting to show up again. Oh, and let me remind you guys, please, if you're in the area of the Captree Overlook, please stop down at the Fred Gow Farm Memorial. It's a nice memorial overlooking the Robert Moses Pier. Spend a few moments there, think about Fred. Have a nice week, and we'll see you next week. So how do you catch Kobe?